the fans ever saw the jokes that he would tell yeah. Big John McCarthy, yeah, like before really he would bad. fight, like in the cage. Yeah, it was pretty cool. You guys should check that well, out. He's a lot better than Lanny Poffo is as a comedian. Yeah. Have you ever seen him? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man. I'm watching that. You know what's funny though? When you mention Lanny Poffo, when I started my show, I wanted to do. I came up with pernicious purveyor of preposterous pomposity, manipulating the minuscule minds of the masses of miscreants. And I kind of took that from <laughs> Lanny Poffo. If folks remember, he was the genius and the poet in right, the old yeah. WWF. And uh, I know one young lady that's been on your show that's not a big fan of his is my good friend Stephanie Gorgeous George Bellers. Not a big fan of Lanny's. And hopefully one of these days we'll finish the book I did with her. You know? That's true. And you've done numerous books now. And you're yep. working on one with Stephanie. Stephanie, yep. Yep. Chaotic Enlightenment, uh, An American Psycho's Journey to Peace Through Violence is the newest one. And and it's got a lot of great stories in it. It sounds like yeah. It sounds yeah, interesting. Fun. Yeah, it's fun. We have fun, yeah. man. You know, I always yeah. believe in having fun, and and uh, you know, I've had some fun with the fans, with Devin Larat's fans. Mm-hmm. You know, and I say I've been so popular since that they they love me so much on Hannibal TV that I'm thinking about running for Prime Minister of Canada. Well, Devin actually did a a rebuttal to you recently, so now everyone's wondering, is this match going to happen? And i got to ask Sal, have you seen any of this stuff, and do you think he's... Yeah, I'm on on top of it. I'm watching it. I think it's going to happen. Are you going to bet money on him? (laughs) (laughs) Let me see what I got on me. (laughs) Man, I never knew that there was such an arm wrestling community out there. I had no idea. Oh, yeah. And, and, And what sparked me to do that was, like I told you when I watched it I didn't know who Devin Lorat was I had no clue who he was and when I watched it I was I saw him and he was bashing Gary Goodrich and he was bashing Scott Flash Norton so I'm like who is this Jabron? Scott actually got so upset about he actually called <laughs> yeah. myself and Sonny Ono oh, yeah. and basically uh, <sighs> made us take down that video oh, clip no. unfortunately <laughs> oh man well Sonny Ono I got a chance to work with that World Association of Kickboxing Organizations at the Des Moines Iowa show got a chance to call the, the fight card with him and I think that we need to see Devin, speaking of Devin, we do see Devin Hannibal Nicholson in the World Association of Kickboxing Organizations. Anything's possible. I'm constantly training in that discipline and tr- uh, trying to improve as best as I can. I've only been in it for a year, but that's definitely a possibility for the future. Yeah, and folks that want to check that out, I broadcast for for Waco USA team, and it's and it's the with the IOC and it's with the Olympic Channel and. They do. They have an event coming up on May fourth. They'll be calling some of the fights. It's going to be. I believe that's going to be Team Australia versus Team USA. But they have different teams that go against one another. You said you might be able to get me a match with me representing Team US. USA. Yeah, and KJ Cordick told me yes. I asked her. I said, "Is that something you could do with him being, you know, from Canada?" And she said, "I think so." You know, she said, "Let's ask Rob." So we'll ask Rob Zabilski, who's the CEO. And I, we'd love to see we'd love to see Hannibal as the heavyweight representing yeah. Team USA. I eventually want to live here anyways because it's far too cold in Canada. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's massive. This is paradise. Oh yeah. yeah. Even South Carolina was I in the 80s it, last week up until yesterday, and you know South Carolina could be 70 in February. It could be 40, but it's never that cold. Uh, yeah. You know, especially yeah, from growing right. up up north. Yeah. Oh, so I talked to Valley yeah. Two's in production. Pre-production, we're already talking about it. We're in the planning stages of it. Uh, I already spoke to Rob. I told him, get Cyborg signed up. <laughs> so <laughs> make the contract up and let's talk to her. So we're getting ready to approach her. And, you know, I'm sure she's going to want to come back in. Speaking of Cyborg, her training center is right beside Tito Ortiz's uh, gym and right. uh, facility where I interviewed him not too long ago. That's in Long Beach, right? Uh, it's in Huntington Beach. Huntington Huntington Beach. Beach. Right, Huntington. right. I was living in Long Beach, right? It's a uh, town over. But uh, wondering your thoughts on the Tito Ortiz uh, Chuck Liddell fight. <laughs> I was very proud of. Man, well, my thoughts are sad. I'll tell you, my thoughts on it are, you know, it's kind of mixed because 
Chuck Liddell was a legend, man. I just I just was talking to Bonner about Liddell, and he was telling a crazy story about Reykjavik, Iceland, where he beat the hell out of this guy and ended up in prison. Uh, and uh, Reykjavik being like a socialist country, he stayed there for a few days and, and got party money, and then they dropped the charges and he flew back, and he had a broken hand, and Liddell shook his hand with so much power that it did so much damage that he couldn't fight his next UFC fight. That'll be in the book, wow. the Chaotic Enlightenment book. But man, for me, coming from MMA, being a coach, competitor, broadcaster, for me, uh, Chuck is such a legend that I hate to see these guys stick around too long. But also, I don't, I, I despise seeing them get badmouthed by these fans. And something that really bothered me years ago, and I walked away from MMA um, back in uh, 2000 and. 13 because I was cornering a fight in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina, and the kid I was cornering didn't end up fighting because one of the fighters died right in the locker room, like a few feet from me. Wow. And the fans were, the show was canceled, obviously, and fans were so disrespectful. And I witnessed wow. that, and they were they were they were throwing garbage cans and just and I just said Whoa. MMA fans disgust me. I don't want anything to do with it. So I walked away from it for a while, mm -hmm. and then ended up coming back. I cornered a couple fights, and then eased my way back into broadcasting when my friend Rob McCraw opened up Strike Off Fighting Championships in 2015, and he asked me to be the broadcaster for them up in Virginia. But yeah, I mean, I mean, that's what I don't like to see is these fans disrespecting. Chuck Liddell, you know, he's a legend. And let's face it, man, I'm in my mid 40s. You know, a 30 year old me would beat the hell out of me right now, you know? And, and I think that any of us that have competed in combat sports have more respect than that. You know, Chuck is a legend. And um, it's, it's just sad, really, when you look at it, that the fans are so disrespectful. And with Tito, you know, that's personal for Tito. That's a personal fight for Tito. You got to consider this is a guy that beat him twice. He's not looking at the age. What if Chuck had gone in? What if Chuck had gone in there and knocked Tito out? You know, we nobody knew. No, right. People thought Chuck was sandbagging in his training, so nobody really knew what was going to happen there. So I think that there's that, and then the level of disrespect. You know, from the fans. But I don't fault Tito. You know, Tito's always been, you know, a lot of people think I don't like Tito because I managed Bonner um, and, and all that we had going on in Bellator. But bottom line is, you know, I respect Tito Ortiz. You know, he's a great yeah. athlete, you know. Mm -hmm. Someone's asking if you're any relation to Jerry Lee Lewis. Um, no, but I am <laughs> relation to Jerry Granahan, who was who was very much like look him up G E R R Y Granahan. He was a big rock and roller at the same time period and also a great singer and I and I do sing some Elvis tunes on occasion and to wrap things up with uh, Sal here any acting advice for any of the actors watching this don't quit if you're in it stay in it you got to be in it to win it as soon as you're out they forget about you so stay involved central casting casting networks do your research do your submissions get in there make it happen you have to make it happen yeah Really, you really gotta want it. It's not easy, but if you get to get to that point where you, you know, you feel like you accomplished it, that means you made it, and it feels good. You yeah, know? that Fight Valley movie had to feel great, man. Yeah, it's yeah. a good feeling knowing yeah. that you accomplished that because yeah. it's forever. Yeah. You know, something that you built and it's going to be around for a yeah. long time after I'm gone. It's like anything you do, like this show, like for, for Hannibal or even my, like my show. I love mm -hmm. my show. That's why I encourage people to check it out. Mm -hmm. ArenaSportsNet.com backslash King, King's Court backslash because I've enjoyed every episode. And every episode mm -hmm. has been like a piece of my life. We did an episode with Bellator when I was prime marketing consultant with a Spike TV episode. I encourage everybody to watch because people look at these podcasts a lot of times to find out about the business of, of oh, the yeah, wrestling yeah. and the fight business. And that was a great episode as far as just the business perspective for fans. You know, and why it's a great why, help. Yeah. yeah it's a it great helps help. you when you watch, I think, when you watch the products. You yeah, know? Exactly. Yeah. All right, fans, thanks for your comments on this. There's going to be a lot of interviews uh, coming in this next week. We have Brian Nobbs of the Nasty Boys. We have Danny Spivey. Many, many wrestlers. I can't even think of them all. Bushwhacker Luke's going to be on here. 
Uh, a lot of great stars are going to be doing interviews w with me this week, so uh, keep paying attention to that. And do you have any final words for Devin Larratt, the World Arm Wrestling Champion, to, to close this up? I have a kind of a story. I want to close out with a story. And I want to close out with a story for all his fans. And it reminds me of the story of the lion and the wildebeest. Now, the wildebeest looked at the lion. He looked at the beautiful mane of the lion. He saw that the lion was stronger, was smarter, was far better looking. And the wildebeest, he responded by going and getting other wildebeests together. They herded together and they went after the lion. And that's when they found out why the lion is the king of the jungle. Devin Larat, you're looking at the lion. And I hate to ruin that finish, but that comment reminded me you're, you're somewhat of a ladies' man. I've seen all the pictures yeah, of you yeah. with all these girls. And, and I yeah, want to promote little Glory, too. Miss yeah. Glo my, my, beautiful Miss, my beautiful woman, Miss Glory Diferente. She was the Ariana Grande of Venezuela. And there's been so much kind of turmoil in Venezuela. She's, she's not allowed back there. She's here in the States. She used to sell out stadiums there. And I got some great wow. stuff coming up with her. She is a sexy so woman. Pick up artist advice. Well, I think it's just one word. Two words, relaxed confidence. If you can be relaxed and confident at the same time, mm -hmm. and it's like I do when I, when I broadcast, it's like if you're, if you're nervous, it's like fighting is the same right. thing. Wrestling, one of my, my, <laughs> uh, Ken Russell, my, one of my, my old wrestling coaches always said, if you're, if you're tense, you're gonna blow up. So be relaxed. The same thing with the ladies, because if you're relaxed, they're yeah. relaxed. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Sal was relaxed earlier, but his wife didn't seem to be relaxed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> She's probably putting spells on me right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. And last thing, and I'll close this off. Do you guys want to just tell us your social media for fans that want to look you up? Uh, yeah, you can look me up on Fight Valley, uh, Facebook Fight Valley dot, uh, dot com, I guess. What is it? Uh, yeah, you look up your South yeah, Francios. Yeah, South uh, Francios. You yeah. just Google my name yeah. and everything else will pop up with it. Yeah, and my, my Facebook Fight Valley is, uh, pops up. Man. Matthew J. Granahan, G-R-A-N-A-H-A-N. And I've got the Max Friends, but you can follow, trying to get more followers. And then my uh, Instagram is king.of. Dot Connecticut, C O N and E C T I C U T. And I'm trying to build up my Instagram because Phil Baroni set up my Instagram for me. And for some reason, he set it up to where I'm following mostly looks like women of the evening or all who I'm following. <laughs> I guess because the way he set it up. So I'm trying well, to get he's some. He's giving you all his leftovers. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> I said all his leftovers. <laughs> 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 I'm sure you take him gladly. Oh yeah, I'll take his leftovers. I'll take Angela, I'll take his ex-wife.